So this year we held five events. The first one we had a press conference. And the reason why we had a press conference is there's a lot going on in the Gambia. There's a lot going on across the continent. But we see that we as Africans, we're not controlling our own narratives. We're not telling our own stories. So most of the time, the pictures you see about Africa is not what we are experiencing in the continent. So this is why we took it on ourselves to say, let's get the media and let's tell our stories as Africans. Let's speak about what we are doing across the continent. On Tuesday, we were at the University of the Gambia where we held a science expo. And you could see from some of the photos, the science expo was rich by showing what talents and experiments that the university students are doing. So we saw experiments in different areas from physics, people using water to build light bulbs, people using fire, people using different, different cotton bombs, and a lot of other experiments that were done by the university students. And I was so amazed with, with the work that they were doing. And I could tell you, one of the most impactful thing of what we have done in this week is I saw a tweet from the science club that one of the group, one of the schools that participated in the science expo did a similar expo at their school and they were doing the same experiments that the university students were doing. They were doing the experiments without support from the government, without support from the university, without support from us. And it sends a, a strong message to me to say that if young students like that in junior school can put together something that we all came to put together without our support and make it work and put it out there, it shows that we have a bright future for our young people in this country. I've always been someone who's been very, very interested in science. In fact, up until my university level and after I finished university as well, science has always been my primary focus. I won't tell you guys what I studied until a little bit later. But I think one of the interesting things when I hear about young people getting involved in science is that any field that you look at today, you cannot succeed without technology. And we need to start thinking just beyond Gambia alone. We need to start thinking about the global economy that we exist in today. Without technology, there is no way we're going to compete. It's just a reality. When I was in high school, my final project was actually to make a solar cooker. And we used just an old satellite dish to actually make this so that people could cook outside just with no energy whatsoever. You didn't need gas, you didn't need no electricity. And I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure it's still somewhere maybe in the school, but this was over 10 years ago. And I went forward to do my university and I started off studying software engineering, but I finally graduated with a degree in computer science and environmental science. When you honor, honor a teacher, you are honoring society. Because I recall, I, I know that in Germany, the highest paid professions starts with the teachers. And then, of course, the lawyers, the doctors, the scientists all complain, why are teachers paid more than other disciplines, including as bankers? And Angela Merkel, in her own wisdom, said, you will not be where you are without your teachers. So you need to celebrate your teachers because everything starts, the foundation starts there. I think we should just be with determination. Fair enough, there will be challenges, but I think with determination we can get there. I think we should all just stop being so scared of science and STEM. Let's, if it's what we want, let's go for it. Give it our all. In fact, let's be so good at it that instead of us being scared of science, let's kind of be scared of us. Why should we be scared of us? <laughs> now, from the training that I've been giving others, I believe strongly that if you went into any of these hospitals today, government or private, needing an x-ray, you're more than likely to be attended by one of my students. Unfortunately, well, I wouldn't quite say unfortunately, but I think they'll be mostly men. Because when I sit in my lecture room, I have a class maybe of 12 students, only two would be ladies. So that means these ladies are still shying away from these subjects. Why? I do not know. So I kept saying to myself, why don't Gambians know more about marine science? The River Gambia is the largest estuary in West Africa. 
I know you're like, what's an estuary? An estuary is pretty much the River Gambia where it's one part salt water, the other part's fresh water, and in the middle where it comes together is brackish. Why don't we know these things? It's important for us to know these things. Or for, for example, what's happening in Banjul when the erosion is happening? Sediments are eroding. Why don't we understand the, the wave dynamics and why we might, Banjul might not exist in 2100? Have you heard of that? Show of hands, how many people have heard? Right, so what are our uh, mitigation strategies? What are our adaptation strategies? Well, if we don't know what oceanography and marine science is, we have no strategy.